Hey guys, this is uh, just a quick tutorial on how hydraulics work. Some of you have had certain questions that this may answer or help answer. Um, so I've got a two pump, piston pump to the front, four batteries. And I, the way I've got it connected is uh, basically four batteries to the front, four batteries to the back is the way that it's connected. All right, so just starting from the basic, you've got your ground, quick, dis quick disconnect, your four batteries, your second to last battery has your um, your switch box wire on it right here and these two batteries it's also got a wire that connects to these two batteries which then go to your solenoids which then go to your pump Alright, so basically the way that this rolls out, when you hit the switch, power travels from these four batteries. The switch box tells these solenoids to complete the circuit and then send power to the motor. The motor then sends fluid to the front or to the back or whichever and then when you hit the dump when you hit it the other way it travels back through not through the um, check valve side but uh, comes back through through the dump side now when you when you trace your uh, switch box wire you'll notice that the wire itself the uh, power side of the wire will then connect to the center of your switches. Now this is just a um, just a random switch box that I had but to give you an idea it goes through the middle. Now one side is your dump side, one side is your lift side. So when you hit the switch say for instance to go up it should be this wire for up and this wire for down because it's connecting the circuit like this or like this okay so when you hit the switch power travels or excuse me power is already traveling to the uh, switch to the center as soon as you hit that switch it completes the circuit from there to whichever side that you hit which then comes back to the solenoids or the dumps if you're hitting it up, it comes to the solenoids, and then the solenoids tell or complete the circuit and let the uh, motor turn, and that lifts it. Same thing for when you hit the dump. Only difference is the motor's not turning. A couple other things to tell you: um, when filling up your pumps uh, with fluid. You want to drop the car all the way, uh, take your, uh, your, your uh, plug off, and fill it up about three quarters of the way, uh, about 80%, give or take. Once you've done that, you can uh, put the top back on, hit the switch. You can also bleed your valves. Uh, when bleeding your valves, uh, it's important, and when I, when I say bleed your valves, what I mean is, is get the air out of the lines. Um, so, if, there was, if you had taken off a hose or something like that to do some work or something and you lost a bunch of fluid that way, you probably have air in your lines. So, it's, it's a good practice to uh, go ahead and bleed your lines. Um, you can do it in a number of different ways, but uh, the probably the easiest way is once the car is all the way down, you got it connected, every, you've got enough uh, fluid in your uh, uh, tank there. Go ahead and uh, hit the switch just a little bit, and then go up front or to the cylinder and crack your line. You don't have to lift it all the way up. Uh, you can lift it all the way up if you want to. Uh, crack the lines, and if you hear air coming out, then you know that's considered bleeding the lines. Uh, you want to drop the car all the way, and then check your fluid again. Um, now, one thing you do not want to do 
is um, lift the car, take this off, put fluid in it, and then tighten this thing back down. Because as soon as you drop the car, all that extra fluid that's in the lines is gonna come back in here. And it's either gonna pop this off, or it's gonna bend this, or it's gonna do any number of things. Uh, you know, it's gonna mess up a lot of stuff. You don't wanna do that. So make sure the car is down when you're putting fluid in there. One thing to point out, with my solenoids, you'll notice that I've got those uh, two uh, couplers, which are those little items right there. Now, I like them only because they're cleaner, they're easier to connect, it just makes a cleaner hookup, but they are not made of copper. Um, I believe they're made of steel of some kind. Um, so if you're running a lot of juice, a lot of power, you might want to stick to your uh, tried and true copper wire connectors. Um, you know, they're always a good thing to use. But I've never had any problems out of these, but that doesn't mean that on these uh, high-end setups where you're running 12 batteries, 16 batteries, whatever, that, uh, you know, this may not be the best choice to use. Now, with my dumps, you've got two wires coming out. And one of them obviously goes to your switch box. The other is for ground. Now, I know that uh, you're probably supposed to uh, ground them to some good ground on the car or something like that, but I've never had a problem with doing it this way, and all I've done is taken the, um, taken the dump off the post here and literally shed the wire back and wrapped it around a few good times and then just tighten it back down. I've never once had a problem out of it. I'm sure there's probably many people are going to say that there's better ways of doing it. I'm sure there is. There's always a better way to do something. Um, but that's how I've done it and it looks cleaner to me. Uh, it's one less wire to have to worry about and like I said I've never once had a problem.